Hey guys, I know this is a really bad time for most people who watch my channel. It's currently 9.30 in the a.m. here, so it's going to be in the middle of the night for most people who watch my channel. But I am going to keep this quite short. I'm going to keep it to under an hour so it's accessible to people who watch on the replay. And also I've got to go out in a bit, so... I've got to keep it to an hour max anyway, because I've got to go out. However, I will be back later because there is a press conference in the Madeleine Soto case, according to the media out there. So this is the Osceola News Gazette. Kasimi pleased to give update on Madeleine Soto death investigation on Thursday. So it's going to be 2 p.m. Eastern, which I believe is 6 p.m. my time. So I'm going to be back later because um, that's that's potentially, an, a, you know, a decent update because um, the police in that case haven't given an update for quite a while. So I think that's going to be an important one. So I will be back later on. I will be back from where I've got to go mid-afternoon. So I'll set up my live for about maybe 5.15 or 5.30 my time. So that'll be like 1.15, 1.30 Eastern. So, um, yeah, so that's coming later on. But for this live stream, we're going to be talking about Sebastian Rogers. Now, Sebastian Rogers is the 15-year-old boy missing out of Hendersonville in Tennessee. So it's a um, few miles north of Nashville. So we've been talking about Nashville a lot over on this channel because of the Riley Strain disappearance. And uh, Sebastian, I'm flummoxed. Like the Riley Strain case, I've come out from day one and said he's in the river. He's in the river. It's obvious he's in the river. And nothing has swayed me from that. How he got in the river is, you know... a I don't know. I don't know how he got there, but uh, he's in the river. This case, however, I am absolutely flummoxed. I'm flummoxed. I, 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 I am really, really confused. And I haven't done an update on Sebastian's case for, I think it's about four or five days, because no new information has come out, um, you know, that's credible. And, and therefore, I've continued to be flummoxed. However, I stopped reading the Facebook groups. I mean, a couple of um, Sebastian Rogers Facebook groups, and I've stopped reading them. When they come up on my, you know, my, my timeline on Facebook, I just skip over them because the it's just hatred. It's hatred, and it's just not useful. So my title here, you know, what do you see that I don't? Is the question. What do you see that I don't? Because uh, look, Seth, um, the bio dad, has um, done quite a few interviews now, has um, have Chris and Katie. So Chris, the stepdad, and Katie, the mother of Sebastian. And they've done a lot of interviews and I've just got finished watching Smiley's World, who had Chris and Katie on overnight my time. So I got to I got to watching it. Down Under With Love has been a member for 18 months. What I don't see is evidence that he left. This is the thing. Where is he? Because the house has been searched. It's not a big property. It's not like acres and acres and acres of land. It's a, a small property. And that house has been searched multiple times. The yard, the front and the back yards are all open. Where is he? You know, we had that kind of promising lead from a few days ago that Nick Barris, the reporter, shared of the flashlights. And we've been told now that those are not what we think they are, that it's not Sebastian leaving at 310. And okay, okay, 
if that's not Sebastian leaving, I'd like to know what it is. But where did he go? How did he leave? If he's not in the house and he's not he's he's not in the yard, like deceased, he had to have left. He has to have left. So how did he leave? So I'm just going to read your comments and um, and respond to them for as long as I've got. That's true. Chris admitted taking a belt to Sebastian. So if you've not seen Smiley Stories World, what's his name? Hold on, just let me get a channel up. Uh, yeah, Smiley Stories World. Here we go. It's this one. So it's three hours and Chris and Katie are on for the majority of it. Like I said, I've just finished watching it. Um, Smiley Stories World. So it's called Live at the Request of Chris Proudfoot. Oh, you can't see it. There you go. Smiley Stories World. Live at the Request of Chris Proudfoot. It's got an amber alert thing on the thing. So it was that interview where Chris admitted that he punished Sebastian with a belt. Just one whack, but still. I don't agree with that type of punishment. I I don't believe it's effective. Look, I got hit as a child and it didn't taught it didn't teach me anything. It taught me how to be um cleverer at uh, doing what I wanted without anybody knowing. That's what it taught me. We had a teacher at school who used to, he had a, um, he had a belt. I, ne I never witnessed anybody getting belted. I got the ruler off him. Um, he also had a, like a, a plimp sole, like a training shoe. So, he, he, you know, it was it was up, up and up and up. And corporal punishment had been banned in schools <laughs> when when uh, Mr. Hemingway was doing that. And he didn't care. He didn't care. He did it anyway. So it's not the type of punishment that I would um, give a child. It's not the type of punishment that I think is effective in teaching a child not to do whatever it is that they've done wrong. But some people are very old school in their discipline. So what I'll say is, yes, he did say that. However, is that responsible for Sebastian's disappearance? Because the thing is, Chris can prove where he was. Chris can prove that he was in Memphis three and a half hours away. So is Chris giving Sebastian a whack with a belt responsible for Sebastian's disappearance? That's how I'd answer that one. Lots of people saying, good morning, good morning. Um, yeah, there is. It's the preliminary hearings, I believe, for Jesse Vang and um, Katrina Bauer uh, today and tomorrow. So Jesse today, Katrina tomorrow. So I will cover that. I haven't covered uh, Elijah's case for a while, so I will cover that. I don't know whether I'll stream the hearings live. It depends what time they're on, but I will cover it. Um, something's bugging me. Something's bugging me about him. I know everybody blames stepdads in these cases. I try not to be. It gives me the creeps. I have to say that Chris is very forthright. He's, he's very concerned about the public image. That, that's the thing that bugs me. It's probably the only thing that bugs me about Chris. He's very concerned about what the public thinks about him and Katie. And I can understand that to a point because he's the stepdad. He's the one that doesn't have the biological relationship. There is some friction between him and Seth's side of the family. So I can understand why he's, he's concerned. However, I think it's rubbing people the wrong way because he spends a lot of time trying to, you know, preserve his public image. 
what I do like is the fact that he's willing to answer questions. He's willing to answer a lot of questions. There's certain things that the cops have told them they can't say, um, but he is willing to answer questions. So I do like that. And I don't see that as being a red flag. Humble pie stays in the freezer. Good stuff. <laughs> Keep it there. Because we don't know. We don't know what happened. All I can say is I don't see how Chris and Katie could be responsible um, given the timeline. Um, I, I'm not going to... I'm not going to play Smi any of Smiley's live because it's it, it's so new. I'd like people to go over and watch it. It's only finished a couple of hours ago. So I'd like people to go over and watch it. It's, it's an interesting one, I have to say. It's an interesting one. I think the him saying that he belted Sebastian, I think that's the thing that everybody's going to run with today. Okay, so we've got lots of good mornings, good mornings. Good time for you, Navalus. Good morning, good morning. Yeah, it's a good time for it's a good time for me as well. It's a good time for the Australians. Have they done lie detector tests? Yes, they passed. They passed. Um, Seth hasn't done one. Um, he they they have not asked him. Um, to do one, but he said he would do one if they asked him. Um, I'm looking for questions and comments. I, I can see lots of lots of good mornings, but I am quite far up in the chat. So good morning, everybody. Just heading to bed, curious Kiwi. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as we understand it, the last time anybody other than Katie saw Sebastian would have been when they went out for dinner. So Katie has said, so there's been quite a lot of different interviews. So we've had two on Duchess's channel. We've had one with the news. Chronicles of Olivia has done one. Smiley has done one. I don't know where else they've been. Those are the ones I've seen, I think. Maybe another one that I've seen as well. I can't remember. And then I think I've seen all the ones that Seth has done. I think I have. So what Katie has said is that they went out and she went and picked her niece up and they did something with the niece. I think they went to the bowling alley. I might be wrong. And then they went out to dinner. Just her and Sebastian went out to dinner. So those places will have CCTV. So even though the cops haven't released that CCTV, it must be there. So the cops must be um, under the impression that Sebastian was seen alive and well on the Sunday. So... I don't, I don't see in the timeline, given that Chris was in Memphis and Chris is going to be able to prove that he was in Memphis during that time when Sebastian disappeared. And remember, it's three and a half hours each way. So I, I just can't see how they would be able to sneak a body away without anybody seeing. That's where I'm at with it. I, ju I just can't, I, I can't put it in my head, that the, there's a possibility of it. Curious Kiwi, member for 13 months. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. But I'm going to move on. Am I growing my hair grey? I'm grey on top. Well, kind of grey. I'm grey at the front. Um, and what I'm, 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 grow, I'm growing out the red. I'm growing out the red. Um... So I'm a grey at the front, and then it's my natural colour at the top. So it's it's multi-toned at the moment. Okay, I'm going to move down. Let's have a look. 
Mum went driving. Where where has that been said? Mum went driving. What? She went driving in the in the middle of the night, or when did she go driving, Mike? Because what we've heard about um when Sebastian when it was found that Sebastian had gone. So she got up at six, six a.m. to get him up for school. She looked around the house, thinking that he may be in the kitchen, maybe in the bathroom. She looked around the house. She rang Chris. She rang Seth. So I don't know where where it's come out that Seth wasn't contacted because Seth Seth has said he was on shift. So he'd had a call and a text at 6.20. So this would have been during the course of, you know, Katie checked the house, checked the yard, checked, the, checked everywhere in, you know, the immediate vicinity. She'd run Chris, she rang Seth, but Seth didn't get those messages till 7.20 when he got off his shift. Chris was, uh, sorry, Seth was on shift. He's a deputy, sheriff's deputy. He was on shift. Got back to his vehicle at 7.20, checked his form, and there was messages. So Seth has said that, that they contacted him at 6.20. Then Katie went out and drove around the neighbourhood. So that's when she went driving. She went and drove around the neighbourhood. She went as far as the school. The school's half a mile away. Came out just to see if he'd gone out. You know, he decided to, I don't know, watch school or something. And then at 6.39, they called the sheriff's office. What are the two flashlights? We don't know. We don't know. But the cops have come out and said that they're not significant and they're not relevant to the investigation. So I don't know what they are. That's right. Yeah. I mean, it's understandable. I mean, people are speculating because it's just so confusing. So I can understand the speculation, but the hatred is, is just beyond beyond comprehension. Paper chaser, member for 17 months, just woke up and found this notification. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. You believe they know where he's at? If they know where he's at, how did he get to wherever he's at? How did he get to wherever he's at? Sketchy. I can imagine that they're not everybody's cup of tea. You know, Chris is he is very forthright and he's he's very he's very vocal. He's he's taking control of the situation because he's trying to keep I guess he's trying to keep hatred away from Katie. So it, it kind of looks controlling and i would imagine that in the relationship he's the dominant one but I, I don't think it's relevant to sebastian's disappearance again because of the timeline he just got gone like summer wells yeah and uh uh the the scent dog um, Chris has said in the in the Smiley interview that the dog got the scent, tracked him to the construction site and to a retention pond at the construction site. But the retention pond is only knee deep. So they walked the pond and then they drained the pond and there's nothing there. I'm wondering whether... Um, I'm wondering whether the scent, I, I've talked about this lots about search dogs. I would like to know when that dog tracked him, when that particular dog that got the scent, when did it, how many days after did that dog track? I'd like to know that the answer to that. Yeah, that's that's where I'm at. Because they, they've said that they, you know, his phone's locked down, his switch is locked down with parental controls. 
Well, parental controls can just be overridden if you know the password. So would Sebastian be able to guess the password? But uh, having said that, the cops have all of the uh, all of the electronics. So even though the cops have not told us, did they have did they have evidence that Sebastian was talking to someone online? Custody was motive. In what way? In what way? So they'd all agreed that Sebastian was going to go and live with Seth at the beginning of the summer. And Seth had him enrolled in a school there in Clarksville. So how was custody motive? I don't understand. Yeah. I have a temper. I have a terrible temper. Yeah, I can imagine Chris does have a temper. However, is is Chris's temper responsible for Sebastian's disappearance? Given that Chris was not there. When was the last time he was seen in public? Um, when Katie and Sebastian were out for dinner. So I don't know exactly when that time was. I don't know whether it was in the afternoon or the early evening, but that would have been the last time he was seen out. And presumably there would have been surveillance that the cops haven't released, but presumably the cops have that. Lynn, member for 25 months. Oh, you're an OG. Anybody who's done 24 months and above is an OG. Thank you so much for being a loyal, loyal supporter. He's a smart kid, they keep saying, yeah. I'm going to turn this screen off because... Those are the recent comments. I'm going down these comments. I'm going down these comments. Show us a video of him returning home. The cops will have the cops will have all of the surveillance from that neighborhood, whatever that whatever that shows. They're not going to release it because it's an open and active investigation. They only tend to release surveillance video when when um they need the public's help so let's take riley strain for example like releasing the surveillance was very relevant because it was you know he was here he was right here and then he was right here and then he was right here and it jogs people's memories Whereas in Sebastian's case, if you, if it's just about proof of life, then the cops have that. They don't need to release it. They release it if they needed the public's help in that particular, you know, for whatever reason, in that particular stance. I know, I know. But yet the cops have said that it's it's not significant that's what that's what threw me that's what completely threw me there's no way we're going with no shoes katie said on the smiley interview that sometimes he did go out in his socks um he'd go out into the yard in his socks and she would tell him to come back in and put his shoes on. So it's actually the case that he he has gone out into the yard with his socks on. So it's not barefooted, but he has done that. No scent from dogs. That's not true. That's not true. There has been scent. Both Seth and Katie and Chris have said, both of them have said that there was a scent at the construction site. There was a track at the construction site. That's why I'd like to know what day that was found. Yeah, but like I said, he has been known to go out in his socks. Like, just into the yard. I wonder what the punishment was for. I don't know, he didn't say. But regardless of what, what the punishment was, was for, it's not an effective way to discipline a child. 
teach Roy to be more sneaky if he's anything like me. Um, taught you not to hit anyone. Mm, did the opposite to me. I learned to fight fire with fire. Did the opposite. It taught me how to take a punch and it taught me how to, um, it taught me not to be scared in a fight. So, you took the paddle at school, oh dear. Can't remember. I know when I was at school, corporal punishment had been banned. Mr. Hemingway, he had the ruler. For small infractions, like talking in class, that's why I got the ruler. Somebody asked me for a pencil, and I said something like, I've only got one. That was it. And he saw me, and he gave me the ruler. Um, a little lad called Dean, he was always getting the... It was like, um, you know, like a gym shoe that kids wear, but it was an adult size one. He was always getting that. Always. And then he had a belt, but I never saw anybody get the belt. I think the belt was just a threat. He had the belt hung up. <laughs> Ooh, got the ruler. I'm so far down on the chart. I'm going to flick along here. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking for questions and, and comments. That I... When did he go to Memphis? He'd been in Memphis for the whole of February. So he last he was last home at the beginning of February. Because he works weekends, so he'll have time off in the week. And you know, it's a he's a crane operator. They're, they're like on some like big construction job. So he, you know, he goes home when presumably when he's got two days off together. He's not been not, not been home since the beginning of February. And and I'm I'm very sure that the cops will have checked Chris's shift patterns and surveillance and all that stuff. So I can't see how he could have got home, kidnapped Sebastian or abducted him or murdered him and then gone back to Memphis without anybody knowing. I, I don't see how, how that can that can be. Yeah, she drove around the neighbourhood and to the school. Did he leave earlier? Than... We don't know. Um, what we know is he was told to go to bed at nine and he did. And then around 10 o'clock, she heard him like moving around, like doing stuff in his room. So she shouted to him, you know, you meant you meant to be you meant to be in bed. And then she went to bed at midnight, but she didn't check on him. So the last time she physically saw him was 9 p.m. So he could have gone. He could have gone any time after 9 p.m., you know, that 10 p.m. Could have been him getting ready to go wherever he was going. I don't know. It's all contingent on did he have anywhere to go? Did, did he plan it? Is is the question. Did I hear on Nancy Grace why they searched the landfill? Yes. I did. Um, Seth was on Nancy Grace. Yeah, so I, I did see that. Um, I think they've been very measured in what they've said about him. I think they've been pretty honest on the difficulties that they had with him. And they've also been very positive towards him. So, you know, the damned if they do, the damned if they don't. Because if, he, if they'd been nothing but positive, people would have been saying, oh, well, you know, he's autistic. He's got to have had some kind of problem with him being autistic. And they're just not talking about that. So what are they covering up? Because they're being all really nice about him. You, you, they, they've done if they do, done if they don't. Honestly. Um, 
Um, Chris is defending Curtie, yeah. He wants to control the narrative. Um, I think he does. I think, it, I, like I said, I think he's overly concerned about the public perception. And for good reason. <laughs> for good reason. Yeah, but it's not a, it's not a matter of losing custody. Like they've all agreed that he was going to go and live with Seth. So it's not about losing custody. Uh, yeah, I answered that question before. Yeah, um, Katie and Chris have done lie detector tests. Seth hasn't, but they've not asked him and he'd be willing to do it if they if they wanted to. They created the timeline. Yeah, they created the timeline. However, that timeline can be verified at, at least to the point where Sebastian was last seen in public. What about the woman who said she saw him? Um, I'm assuming that you're talking about the person on social media who said that she'd seen him. That was several days ago. And apparently they got helicopters out and stuff and nothing came of it. I think that's what you're talking about. If you're talking about a different, different person, then I haven't heard about it. Uh, they did. They did contact the police right away. I mean, look, he's 15. You know, if a one-year-old goes missing, they're not going to go very far. So, you know, you look around the house and they're not there. Therefore, you call the cops because something very bad has happened. But a 15-year-old, you're not going to immediately, you know, see them. They're not in the room. You're not immediately going to call the cops. Because there's a multitude of places where they might have gone. So Katie did absolutely the right thing in, you know, checking the house thoroughly, checking the yard, going around the neighbourhood to see if he'd gone wandering around the neighbourhood. Went as far as the school to see, you know, he might have got up early and thought, oh, I'm going to walk to school. She did exactly the right thing. So 39 minutes, I think, is, I don't think that's delayed in any way based on the timeline we know. Again, they're damned if they do, they're damned if they don't. You know, if if they'd come out and said, oh, well, you know, I didn't, I saw him, uh, I, I saw that he wasn't in his room and therefore I called the police right away, people would have been saying, oh, well, you know, that's a lie. No one would do that, you know, a 15-year-old. They'd, they'd look around the house and the neighbourhood first. So they can't, they can't win. <clears throat> they can't win. And I'm not defending them at all. I'm just saying I can't see how they could have done this. I can't see why, based on what we know right now, I can't see how people are so hatred, you know, expressing so much hatred towards them. That's my point. Based on what we know now, if if more information comes out, the that shows that this timeline is completely wrong and the cops come out and say that there are no persons of interest, then my opinion will completely change because it's based. that's based on new information. But until new information comes out, I'm going to continue to say, I can't see what you, what you all can see. And based on the information we've got to date, I'm completely flummoxed, and I'll continue to say that until we've got new information, one way or the other. I've not put my my Sebastian banner up. Hold on a minute. There we go. That's the number to call if you uh, have information. 615-451-3838 or the TBI at 1-800-TBI-FIND. Who said the, hold on, what about cameras from neighbours? Yeah, all the neighbours have been very cooperative and have um, given their camera footage. Now, we haven't seen it. All we've seen is the flashlights, camera. We haven't seen it, but the cops have. 
the cops have seen all of the surveillance from that neighborhood. Who said they passed? They did. Yeah, she left in a vehicle to go and look for Sebastian. Um, what's Smiley's channel name? Smiley Stories World. It's on your screen right now. So this one, this one, that's Smiley. So it's called Live at the Request of Chris Profoot, Smiley Stories World. And um, it's got an Amber Alert on it. I'll put it in the chat. Don't. So that's the link to it. There we go. Cringed all the way through Nancy Grace. I know she makes me cringe. I don't normally watch her. I watched her when she did the, what was it? The Madeline Soto one, I think I watched. Was it Madeline Soto? And I watched the one with Seth. He said he went at the beginning of February. I don't see how that's evasive. He, he, he went at the beginning of February, that's what he said. No, wasn't non-verbal, no. He was um, very high functioning, very intelligent, really good at chess. Um, uh, his issues were to do with social interaction. Um, that was where his kind of autism traits came out the most. All right, I'm going to go down a bit here. I honestly don't know. Honestly don't know. My first thought was, and it's the only thought that I've had, and, you know, that he's got managed to get online somehow and he's met someone who said, I'll be your friend, and Sebastian's been too trusting because he struggles with social relationships, and he's gone out to meet someone, you know, at a prearranged time, and they've abducted him. And that's why the flashlight video was so significant to me. But then we've been told time and time again by not just by Katie and Chris, we've also been told by the TBI that all of the, um, I'll get it up, all of the electronics have been checked. So they will know if Sebastian has been groomed by someone, they'll be able to see those messages. So we've been told that all the electronics and stuff has been checked. So does that mean that they've been able to clear the possibility that Sebastian has met someone online? Or does it mean, like the cops of, you know, the, the radio silence from the cops, does it mean that they have found something and that's where they're investigating? I don't think the cops have had a need to lie. They've just not told us anything. Since they stopped the, you know, the acute search in the immediate vicinity, they haven't told us anything other than it's now kind of, an, you know, a larger investigation. So they've not had a reason to lie. Katie had in detail. No, it's not a red flag at all. This is what I don't understand. She's adding detail because she's being asked questions. So in her first interview, you know, she the first interview she did was with Duchess. And then I think it was the day after or two days after she did one with the news, which would have been, it was only like short, it was only like 20 minutes. So it's the amount of questions that are asked. She's adding the detail because people are asking more questions. People are asking her to go through her entire day on Sunday. Not just about, you know, the time he disappeared or the time we think he disappeared. Why would he leave without shoes? I don't know. Maybe because he thought he was being some kind of ninja sneak and he didn't put shoes on because he thought his mother would hear it. I don't know. 
honestly don't know. <laughs> the Tesco delivery man said he's listening to you in his van. Great time to go live. Good stuff. Yeah, I imagine I imagine he is. Um. Yeah, but is it true? You've seen people say it, but is it true or is it the game of telephone? Because I haven't heard Chris say that. So where's that information come from? Kids don't vanish into thin air. They don't, which is why this is confusing. No, it doesn't. No. As I've said numerous times, it depends on the surface so we're assuming that we're talking about ground scent because air scent is gone in a matter of hours. Like if it's windy, even less. Ground scent is what we're talking about. Now on a natural surface like grass or earth, mud, that scent can last at least seven days. Um, it does depend to a certain extent on the weather conditions um, but generally speaking a tracker dog is able to follow a ground scent on a natural surface for seven days or even longer there is um, the longest confirmed track is 13 days that's the longest confirmed and that was a dog who tracked hikers based on their scent sadly the dog found them but they were already deceased but that that scent was 13 days old but that was on a natural surface because these were hikers in the woods or on a mountain or whatever however on an artificial surface like a road which is concrete tarmac any artificial surface that scent dissipates very quickly so you're looking at um a day maximum again depends on the um weather conditions and it depends on the weather conditions a whole lot more with artificial surfaces than natural surfaces also on things like roads the scent will not only dissipate naturally but also it can be um it can be ridden over by cars and stuff like that so you've got lots of new scent that sits on top of it and because dogs are all you're doing when you're training a tracker dog is you're honing that dog's natural ability to track so in the wild a dog would track to follow prey right um so what they do is they catch a scent either on the air or on the ground and they start to track and if they're on the right track, you know, they're getting hungrier and hungrier and that scent of that prey animal is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. If that scent suddenly gets weaker, that dog will stop and think, hold on a minute, I must be going the wrong way because that scent's gone weaker. So dog, get, dog naturally, naturally occurring instances like that, the dog will stop and reevaluate might go back on itself for some time, might search the area for like wider to try to get that scent again. So what you're doing when you're training a dog, and I've trained Cassie to track, what you're doing when you're training a dog is you're honing that natural ability. That's all you're doing, honing a natural ability. So there's so many ways in which a scent dog can get confused. Because if you double back on yourself, the dog can get confused because suddenly that scent disappears because that dog is naturally following a track that's that should be getting stronger. So the dog can't understand why that scent suddenly stops because that dog doesn't understand that someone's turned around and gone back on themselves. So I don't know what I tell you, but when they, when people put out this, 
oh, you know, dogs can track for seven days in ideal conditions on natural surfaces when someone's going in one direction. If they double back, dog gets confused. If they change surfaces, dog gets confused. So if you go from a natural surface to an artificial surface, that dog gets confused. If you get into water, that dog will get confused. Not that they can't track in water, they can, but it's a change of circumstances. So there you go. And yes, I do know dogs. Um, I think you overheard the conversation between Katie and Chris and the phone and took off upset. Okay. We don't know what the conversation was about, but maybe, possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Just a password. It's a password. When my son Kyle was little, I had parental controls on his devices, not because I didn't want him to go on the internet, but I didn't want him to download games and then start paying for stuff on these games. So I had parental controls to stop him from paying stuff on games. That's why I had parental controls on his devices. Um, could he have overridden them? Yeah. He probably would have been able to do it easily. But I never had any strange payments going out. So I assume he never did it. But yeah. Um, but I guess it would, you know, if he came upon that password, it would be a, just a reminder that, oh, I can't do that because it means means I've got to pay. All right, I'm going to move down the chat a bit. I'm going to move down the chat somewhat. Huh? Interesting. Alicia Navarro, when she went missing in 2019, there was nothing on her social media and she walked into a police station in 2023. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. She'd been staying at her boyfriend's or something, hadn't she? Um, uh, Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening. There you go. Autistic son hacked his video games. There you go. Kids are so much smarter than we are. So much smarter than we are. All right, I've got about 10 more minutes, so I'm going to read this. Um, Amber Alert Status. This is from the uh, TBI, TBI Newsroom. So February 26, 15 year old Sebastian Rogers disappeared from his Sumner County home, leading to a large scale ground search that resulted in first responders covering about 2000 total miles in the effort to find him. Now, I've heard people saying they've done 2000 square miles. No, they haven't. 2000 square miles. Can you imagine what, what that is in like surface? No, it's taking all of the searchers like tracks and totaling them all up that's what it is so it'll count like people on horseback it'll count you know people you know all the different searches that have been out there they've got their routes tracked so that's what it means there's his amber alert Continue to work with the Sumner County Sheriff's Office and the FBI to both proactively pursue information that may be relevant to the search of Sebastian and to pursue any tips or pieces of information that come in. We have not forgotten about Sebastian. Much of the work currently being done to bring Sebastian home may not necessarily be public or visible, but agents, detectives and intelligence analysts continue to work around the clock to review every bit of information available. Sebastian's family has remained cooperative since the search began and have done whatever law enforcement have asked of them. At this stage in the investigation, there are few clues to indicate what happened to Sebastian or where he may be. There is no proof at this time that there was any criminal element involved in his disappearance. So at this time, no criminal element they just can't find any evidence of it. Doesn't mean to say there wasn't, they just can't find any evidence of it. Also, there's not any proof that there is not a criminal element involved. So agents and investigators are reviewing any possibility at all that may indicate where Sebastian is. 
In order to preserve the integrity of the investigation, we cannot discuss many of the specifics surrounding the case. But we know how many people care about Sebastian and what has been done is still being done to bring him home. Also, we want ca to caution the public about putting too much stock into information being presented in various media forms that is inaccurate or incomplete and could be damaging to the investigation. So credible tips to 1800 TBI find. Information that has been released by the TBI and or Sumner County Sheriff's Office throughout the investigation, including a list of frequently asked questions, can be reviewed below. What areas have been searched? Within the first several days of the search, more than 2,000 miles were searched on foot. Many of these areas were initially searched and searched again. Law enforcement officers have searched the neighbourhoods, surrounding neighbourhoods, schools and many other areas of the county by foot. Bloodhounds and handlers have searched the same areas. There has been aerial searches with helicopter drones and a fixed wing plane. These aerial searches have been conducted on multiple days and multiple nights using thermal imaging technology. Sebastian's residence, the yard, the house, the vehicles have all been searched multiple times. He's not in the house. He's not in any of the vehicles. The neighbourhood where Sebastian lives has been canvassed. Neighbours' houses have been searched. They've not needed any search warrants or anything for the neighbours' houses. They've welcomed, they've opened the doors, they've let officers search their grounds, their, their house. They've given surveillance camera video over. Sebastian is autistic and his family says he's drawn to water. Pools in the neighbourhood were searched. Dive teams were brought in. Bodies of water around the neighbourhood and beyond that area were searched, including caves. What about the technology aspect? Have you collected security video from areas, homes and businesses? Have cell phones been checked? Many neighbours and businesses have provided videos from home and business surveillance systems. We are grateful for their cooperation. The video has been collected and from the beginning of the investigation has been analysed and enhanced where possible by tech experts with the TBI, FBI and Secret Service. They get the Secret Service in when they want, you know, the best, possible equipment the secret service have got it it's not unusual for them to call in the secret service the date nothing gathered from these video systems have determined to be significant we do caution that some surveillance video is being shared in the public that may be misinterpreted or misidentified or not shown in its entirety i'm assuming that's referring to the flashlights video um, it's been determined that it does not hold any evidentiary significance to the investigation. Numerous search warrants have been executed. So th for things like social media and stuff like that, they need to execute search warrants. Cell phone data has been analysed. Any other available digital evidence has been collected, searched and documented. Information was collected from Sebastian's gaming system and has been analysed. With help from the FBI, vehicles that were placed in the area around the time of Sebastian's disappearance have been accounted for. So the movements of all the vehicles in the area have been accounted for. So I don't know how far an area they've gone out with that, but what it will mean is that in Sebastian Street, they will have accounted for the vehicle movements. That includes Katie's vehicle. These videos and all the electronic evidence have been already reviewed and it's and often also being reinvestigated. What's going on now in the investigation? What's next? The search for Sebastian has not stopped. Every day, tips and leads are investigated. People are being interviewed and re-interviewed. Evidence that has been reviewed once has been gone over again. We continue to ask residents in the area of the search to keep an eye on your property to see if anything may have moved or displaced. Is this a place where a child could have hidden? If you have property that has ledges or holes that a teenager might find interesting and you can't search it yourself please contact the tip line and um, we have someone check it out for you if you know sebastian or have any information about him what he likes how he acts that you think could be relevant let us know we know how many people have been invested in getting sebastian home we will update this information if there's any developments 1800 tbi find or tips to tbi at tbi dot tn dot gov and then they just thank all the people and the businesses who've helped them so this is sebastian here he is with his cheeky smile there's his little doggies there's his snake not got the snake anymore 
uh, there he is there okay i'm gonna go down to the bottom of the chat i'm just gonna answer a couple more and then i've got to go because i've got to go out no he didn't have his phone no he didn't take his phone with him but the thing is was he talking to someone on his phone beforehand you know had he been able to you know bypass the parental controls on either his nintendo switch or his phone has he has he been able to do that the cops will know that the cops will know if he did so it's just really 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 confusing really confusing the fact he didn't take it with him i think is significant um you know it's it's almost like he's been told not to take his phone because the phone obviously is trackable did someone give him a burner phone don't know could be possibly could be but if they've done um if they've done cell tower searching like searched all the numbers that's pinged off a certain cell tower during a certain time they might be able to work out any phones that can't be accounted for but that's a massive task you know given that everybody in the neighborhood will have a phone probably households have multiple phones incredibly difficult to try to work out if there is an unusual phone number that's pinged off a certain tower Eleven thirty PM in Kiwi land. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm just like I I don't know. I genuinely it's one of those cases where I've just gone, I don't know. The reason why I'm not attributing any blame to Chris and Katie at the moment is because I don't see how they could have done something to Sebastian and continue to get away with it. Chris was in Memphis. And Katie, how has she done it without attracting attention from surveillance cameras in the area? I don't understand how they could have done something. That's where I'm at right now. If information comes in that changes that, I'm open to that. I'm as on the fence as can be. I, I can only look at the information we've got today and I don't see anything from their interviews that gives me a red flag as in, oh, there you go, that's your, that's your clue. They do know, that's your clue. You know, the fact that he gave Sebastian the belt, is that responsible for his disappearance? The fact that he's probably a very strict parent, is that responsible? No, no. It tells us a little bit about the type of person Chris is and that he's very old school with discipline. But if he wasn't there, if he was not there on that Sunday, how can he be responsible? How? That's where I'm at. No, no. Apparently his glasses are missing. So he did have his glasses on. Yeah, yeah, they will. They'll get the Wi-Fi router details. Yeah, they will. No, he didn't say that he left without his glasses. I didn't hear him say that. I haven't heard him say that. If you can give me the interview and the timestamp, I'll listen again. It's easy to miss things, but it's my understanding that he um, he left with his glasses. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I don't know. Maybe he heard a cat. Like his apparently his favourite animal is a cat. Maybe he heard cats. Oh, uh, my neighbours are getting a new fence. Can you hear? They're, they're just installing a new fence. So they're going to start doing fence things now. 
I've been watching them. They've walked down the the back track there. They've been carrying bits of fence as I've been talking. So I'm just about to install it now. So I think that's probably my cue to go. I know the guy who's doing it. He's been sat out chatting there for ages. So he's actually doing his job now. He's a very chatty guy. Uh, I think you mean Sebastian, not not Riley. He left for Memphis early February. How many belts did he care to give him? I, I don't know. Again, even if they use the belt, like, I don't know, every other day as a form of discipline, does that mean that they're responsible for his disappearance? It means that they're using an archaic way to discipline a child, uh, a way that I don't agree with. However, does it mean that they're responsible for his disappearance because of that? Did he run away because they're too harsh on him? Possibly. Possibly. That's a, It's a, a very distinct possibility. You know, kids don't like things that parents do and they run away. And something unfortunate might have befallen him. That's a possibility. Exactly. Exactly. All the vehicles, everything to do with the vehicles has been checked. No, Sherry, no. No. That cannot be. Chris was in Memphis three and a half hours away since early February. Sebastian went missing on the 26th of February. Chris hadn't been home for three weeks, probably longer, when Sebastian went missing. So, no, that cannot be. This is the thing that it, 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 you, you're just barking up the wrong tree. Yeah, Katie has a job, yeah. She works in, um, I think it's like some kind of security company or something. They will have done geofencing, yeah. That's basically what they do with uh, cell tower data. Uh, yeah, Chris, people have noticed that Chris has a scratch on his arm. Uh, the dogs did it. He plays with the, the dogs and um, they like to jump up on him and fight him and stuff. Early February. Early February. I don't know what day and what time. I don't know what day and what time other than early February. Sebastian went missing late February. So I, I don't see how Chris can be responsible. I don't. Or have covered something up. No, he said he has not been home since early February. He has said he's not been home since early February. That's what he said. And I am very sure that the cops will have thoroughly checked out his, um, his, his shift pattern. He's working on a construction site. There's other people who can verify where, where he was, when he was. His vehicle will have data. No, she, work, she works. It's a, I can't remember the name of the firm. It has been said, but she does have a job. Oh, yeah, Seth's done loads. Seth's done loads. He's, like, walked his feet ragged. I mean, all credit to him. All right, I'm going to have to go now, guys. I'm going to have to go.
just going to go down to the bottom. I'll do one more question. Has anything been said about police being called on the Sunday? Were the police called on the Sunday? I'm not aware that the police were called on the Sunday. So if the police were called on the Sunday, that's news to me. Um, I'm sure people at the school did t talk to Sebastian, but the school have been interviewed. Uh, no, he went to a mainstream school, but he was in like um, a special needs program. So he did the mainstream curriculum, but he would get like, if they had a test, he would have to do less questions and he'd get longer time to do it. But he was in a mainstream school. Do we know why his shake has gone? Shake? I have no idea what you're talking about there. Yes, I know. I said that at the beginning of this live stream. I shared this at the beginning of this live stream. So um, news conference for Madeline Soto at 2 p.m. Eastern. So I am going to be back later to cover that press conference. Yes, someone gifted you a membership, Robert. It wasn't um, wasn't today. Can you hear that shaking my house now? He's drilling into the wall. No, if you mean Don Wells, I don't think Chris is anything like Don Wells. I really don't. You know, whether you whether you love him, you hate him, you absolutely despise him i don't think he's like don wells check grizzly true crimes community post all right i will grizzly true crime true crime all right click in her community post here yeah. what am i looking at Yeah, we know that. I, I said that at the beginning of my life. I thought you meant there was something in relation to Sebastian. But no, I said right at the beginning of this live stream that there was a news conference. I will be back later. So it's probably going to be about maybe 5.15 my time, which will be 1.15 Eastern. I'll be back. CPS has been called on the family twice, yeah. There is an open CPS case right now because when a child goes missing, the cops have to inform the CPS. Yeah, that's, that's where I'm at, but... Uh, it's the only thing I can think. It's the only thing that makes sense to me at the moment. His story's nothing like Don Wells. I don't get why you're relating him to Don Wells. That's weird. All right, guys, I'm going to go. So I will be back later. Um, it'll be about 5.15, 5.20 my time, so that's 1.15 Eastern. Um, the press conference is 2 p.m. Eastern, so we'll be back later for Madeline Soto. So hopefully they've got some good news for us, like, I don't know, a murder charge has been brought or something. Um, anyway, all right, see you later. I don't think I did donations, so I don't need to thank you for that. Um, but um, thank you as always to the mods and I'll see you later today on this channel. Bye guys.